You've been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen some interesting things. Interesting things? Please enlighten me. I bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. Disturbing? What happened? Why were you investigating them? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts, organs mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. <laughs> harvesting organs? Is that, is that illegal? So what was it? Both, actually. But it took us a while to figure that out. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. <laughs> After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. Ah. So we went to his lab, hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. Krogan testicles. Okay, get to the chase. What did you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. Come on, I'm itching to find out the moral of this story. Yeah, go on. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big brain. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes, walking, living test tubes. Oh, God. That doesn't sound uh, too healthy. <laughs> In fact, it's quite disturbing. He was growing parts inside these people? Exactly. Cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden so nobody could see it. Huh. I'm assuming that you interviewed him. I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught it. <laughs> what? Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, the ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. For God's sake, man! So I just let him go, then? But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down. But CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties, and the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. They just used them to make more organs. They wouldn't listen. <sighs> oh, well. The ruthless side coming through. No wonder you hated it there. Those idiots just let him fly away. Yes, they did. I went to Pat and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't. But at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. Indeed. My motto exactly. You get the job done. Simple as that. A few casualties is a small price to pay to stop someone like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those hostages might be wishing they died by now anyway. Just wish I could have stopped him. That's all. Hmm. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salion? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart. <laughs> Dr. Hart? I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. Ah, well, looky, you're on board my ship. Let me take a look.
I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Aileon, I want to be there when you find him. Oh, don't you worry, pal. I'll even let you put the bullet between his eyes. Damn freak. Okay, it was enlightening talking with you, Garrus. Rexy, anything new? What do you want, Shepard? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. <laughs> uh, yes. Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. Really? What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war, but the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. Hmm, an interesting standpoint. When, uh, what exactly did you think? What was your opinion on the matter? What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. <laughs> to stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding. At least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. Hmm, and Jared? I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows, near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead lay bare to remind us where we come from, and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. Mm. Sounds like a trap to me. It sounds like a trap to me. <laughs> See? You must have suspected as much. <laughs> I did. But when your father invites you to... Your father? Death, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. Oh, that's sick. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left, and that's why I'll never go back. Well... That is a little bit of a shame, I'm afraid to say. I, uh, I didn't know. So long, Rex. Shepard. Ah. So old Rexy boy has had a bit of a hard life, it seems, eh? Krogan ways of life, a little bit ha a little bit harsh. Now, last time we left Ashley, we uh, were a little bit curt with her because she questioned my uh, authority. Uh, she didn't like the fact that I brought aliens on board because she's a racist, basically. She's racist towards aliens, but uh, I had to put her straight, but hopefully uh, she might keep her opinions to herself this time. Commander? Uh, first of all, uh, no, we haven't done anything new on the main mission since last time, so we're afraid from asking her that, but uh, let's see if we can uh, get her to open up a little bit. Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? Sure. I was just watching some mail from home. Ah. Oh, before I go, we saw Caden in a news vid about the Normandy. He's cute. Later, sis. Oh. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. All oh, right. <laughs> Too late, Missy. I heard it all. The damage is done, Williams. <laughs> Shoot me now. One of my sisters. 
That's Sarah, the youngest. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. No, I didn't. I came for a wee chit chat. Tell me more about your family. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With dad on duty so much, I had to help mom raise them. Alright. Dad? Did your father serve with the fleet? Yeah. Took any crap posting he could get that offered space time. You know what? He worked his ass off trying to get recognized. But he never made it above servicemen third class. He was real proud when I made chief. First thing he did was salute. Uh, bless his little heart. And your mother? What about your mother? You haven't mentioned her. You must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be. Able to raise kids while dad's away on a six month cruise. She has a degree in planetary geology. She and dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us though. And sisters? You have more than one sister? Sounds like a big family. Yeah, I'm the oldest, then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's the youngest, she's still in high school. With four girls, Dad used to say he felt more outnumbered at home than on maneuvers. <laughs> Where did you grow up? All over, same as you expect. We transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? I guess that's why I'm so tight with my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. Hmm, well, it, did, it does sound familiar. I was an only child, but I get the idea. At least one of my parents was always on duty. Yeah, military families, eh? With schedules like that, it's a wonder we ever have kids anymore. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Oh, well, I'm stood here now. I'm, uh, tell me more about this little tale of reunion. Sounds like a story. Feel like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did. Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails, and I'd tell her to relax. Where were you when this was going on? I was on active duty. Sarah's graduating high school this year. This was only a couple years back. They were on Amaterasu. At the time, I was assigned to Chernobyl. Same cluster, but a dozen Hawaii away. Close enough to talk regularly, too far to make it back in an emergency. I couldn't afford a fast packet flight. Okay. Sounds like that situation didn't last. Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing mom and dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. Hmm, very handy. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah to school for a few days. You said all of your sisters learned self-defense? Lynn did pistol practice, but didn't like it. She's kind of nervous. Sarah took Aikido. Abby decided to learn the sword. She always was a little weird. Likes big skirts and tops you have to tie her into. They do great things to her figure, though. <laughs> and you? What did you learn? So, what did you learn? One of Dad's friends taught me Marine hand to hand. Oh. Very, very nice. So, after all that, what happened with Mike? Did anything happen while you were home? My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what he did. He wasn't happy. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look, this let me handle it, I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk, and there's blood everywhere. Oh, nice. Well, I like the sound of that. I'd love to have seen it. Got his comeuppance, he did.